Uh, in this lecture, I will speak about sustainable growth and in particular about its relation to energy. I will start with some of the issues that we have in sustainability, about the big challenges, and then I move, will move into solutions and also to the opportunities that new technologies may open up in solving these this, uh, great uh, problems. Now, when we speak about sustainability as large, I think, well, the word has been for a long time here, but I think, again, the beginning of the environmental consciousness that opened up about 40 years ago with the very famous book, Sun Spring, which for the first time actually opened up our eyes about environmental degradation, how the human activities destroy nature, and which also may harm the, the human health and our future. This brain movement, uh, woman, Rachel Carson, she really raised the consciousness. And about 20 years later, uh, we uh, had the United Nations taking up the question as part of its uh, large radio con conference. The United Nations in the 90s, they defined the sustainability and sustainable development in a very simple way. The phrase may be long, but the message is very, very simple. It's about this generation that lives on this planet should leave the planet after it's away in a condition which gives uh, a, the future generations a, a good start for their life. So let's take care of the planet in a way that also the future generations can uh, make use of the resources that we have here. So now we may ask ourselves, where do we stand? How does, how does uh, this generation uh, of people, how, how do they actually uh, follow this very, very uh, important uh, uh, motto. So if we look now on, on how we behave on the planet, planet and how we have built our welfare, it is very much based on using, utilizing the natural resources freely. We, we don't really think very much about how we deplete the resources or how we put pollution back to the nature. So at the present time, if we look on the consumption that we have compared to uh, how sustainable it should be, we actually use about 1.2, 1.3 times more than what the planet can stand. And in the coming decades, that may even increase to uh, a factor of two. So we would need to have two planets, you know, in a way to satisfy the demands and the greed of the people. We also see that in this picture, and this picture shows the countryside based on their ecological footprint, the way they use natural resources and how they pollute, we see that most of the industrialist countries, in terms of consumption, are much, much larger than the poor countries, which tend to be in the south. So there's also an a inequality here, uh, that industrialist countries, they use much more resources than the, the poor countries. So this is an important question when we think about the solutions. Uh, for sustainability is, is all the question about inequality. Now, how does the energy come into the picture? Energy is, is one of the, let's say, key factors that we have in, uh, in the ecological footprint. Energy is, is one of the, let's say, major resources in our society that enables a good living standard. We could say that the modern society wouldn't exist without actually access to modern energy resources. Energy is also coupled to many other uh, grand challenges. We could say that Definitely, the water question, food question, health question is also related to energy. And everybody knows that, yes, the energy also causes the climate change, which is, I would say, the challenge of our, our society. If we are not able to solve the climate change issue, uh, that may, may cause really uh, damage to our ecosystems or damage also to our future. Now, let, let's start to look on the effect of energy in terms of sustainability but just very briefly reviewing the history of energy. Now, there's three major innovations in energy that has changed the life of humans on this planet. The invention of fire, which enables to release the chemical energy in fuels, in particular, in those times in the biomass. Then we have the engine, steam engine, uh, which is invented in the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, which enables us to convert that chemical energy, which comes through burning, into mechanical energy, energy, 
movement. So energy helps us to turn the industrial processes. And then about 150 years ago, there's a big invention about electricity. That is, if we have moving power, we can turn that in a generator into electricity. And the modern society without electricity wouldn't be, be possible. So three major innovations, they have actually changed the, the whole planet and changed our lives. Unfortunately, the energy that drives these processes, drives our power production or drives our industries, is mainly based on fossil fuels. Well, a primitive society in the 19th century couldn't do much more. They just took those sources which were readily available. Fossil fuels are coal, oil, natural gas. They are hydrocarbons, and we know that when we use those fuels, they actually release carbon dioxide which is harmful, harmful for the atmosphere and is, is the cause for the climate change. Presently, 80% of all energy, based on this historical kind of a path that we have had from, from the invention to today, is based on fossil fuels. So this is a huge challenge. Our society is carbon addicted. We need carbon fuels in order to run that society, but we cause also great problems in the environment. So the question is then, of course, what would be the future uh, for that, that path? Now, just briefly uh, summarizing, what are the key problems from energy? Uh, and that relates to the sustainability and also for looking at solutions. Uh, a very good indicator of the uh, effects of energy is, is definitely the global temperature. If you look at the global temperature changes over a scale of thousand five hundred five hundreds. In the medieval ages, we didn't have any commercial energy. We just used bioenergy or wind. The society was very primitive. But after the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, and from that onwards, we see on, on this scale that the, the global temperature is raising rapidly. Now we are in a, in, a, in a point where the global temperature has raised almost one degree compared to the pre-industrial time. And if we just go forward in a business as usual way, we don't do anything, we just use fossil fuels more and more, it seems that the global temperature could raise by even six degrees by the end of the century. Six de degrees warmer means that most of the ecosystems that support life, us, on this planet, would not stand that very fast change of temperature. And some estimates tell us that maybe half of all species on this earth would disappear because of this very huge change of temperature in which the ecosystems, in which the plants, vegetation, would not be able to cope with. So the key issue for us now is in some way to limit the emissions from energy production if we want to really save this planet. A sustainable temperature increase as the temperature will increase whatever we do now because of the historical reasons, because carbon dioxide stays in the atmosphere for about one century. Two degrees temperature, temperature increase, that is what we can afford. And that's actually now the target for international agreements and negotiations. Let's try to restrict the temperature increase to two degrees by the end of the century by reducing the CO2 emissions. So now, in order to reduce the CO2 emissions, let, let's understand how to do that. Let's look on the big picture of energy. 80% of all energy, fossil energy, and the birth fossil fuels are coal and oil. Coal is important for global power production, electricity, and oil that runs our traffic. 98% of our traffic runs on oil and gasoline. So oil and coal together is about 80% of the CO2, carbon dioxide emissions globally. So that's where we need to have focus. How we move, how we transport our goods, and how we produce our electricity. So if we can tackle those two issues, power and traffic, in a sustainable way, that would be a, a huge difference in terms of CO2 emissions. 
Now, how much do we need to reduce the CO2 emissions? Uh, we know from scenarios and from uh, uh, scientific calculations that we need to reduce globally the CO2 emissions by about 50, 60 percent by the middle of this century. So we have about 35 years time to get the problem solved. In industrious countries, which actually are the problem of the global climate change, we have emitted very much in the past, and our welfare is based on carbon dioxide in a way. We need to reduce the emissions by 80, even 90 percent. So in Europe, US, all industrious countries, that's where we really need to revolutionize the way we produce and, and use energy in order to get the emissions down. Unfortunately, the emissions are increasing all the time. We haven't yet got a grip to the problem. And we may have about five to ten years' time in which we need to really change this trend, increasing trend to a declining trend. So we live uh, in a period which is very important actually for the future of this planet. Now the challenge that we have in, in front of us is, is huge in the sense that now it's not enough that the industrial countries that they actually decrease their emissions and they could afford that. I think all the Western countries, industrial countries can easily afford to drop their emissions by 80 percent. It's more about political will. But then we have the rest of the world the emerging countries, the emerging economies, developing countries, which actually are very poor. And they, they use just a fraction of the resources of this planet. There's a 20, 80 percent, 80 rule, which says that 20 percent of the population use 80 percent of the resources. And 80 percent of the population has access just to 20 percent. So if we want to equalize this, so let's, let's give the poor countries an opportunity to improve the living standard. They would need energy for that. They need energy services, electricity. That would mean that the emissions, if the energy production is based on the same way we produce energy today, it would mean huge increase in emissions. Now, the second question of importance when we think about how we cope with the sustainability is, is definitely the questions of poverty. Most of the people on this earth are poor. Half of all people of the seven billion people, they earn less than two dollars a day. And we have over one billion people which earn less than one dollar. So these people actually can afford clean technology today. So here comes the question of global responsibility. We who are rich in the Western countries, industrial countries, need to take more care about those who are poor and weak and which don't have the opportunities to take this, this new path forward. This means we need to go for global justice. If there's not justice, I think uh, we would not be able to solve the, the global uh, grave environmental problems and climate change. Now, it, it may sound pessimistic now. Uh, emissic, emissions goes up and most of the world want to have a better living standard and, and there's not a, a sign that emissions could come down. Now, as comes up the next factor, which is the technology. The global population is increasing. The economic welfare is increasing, which means that emissions was, would kind of naturally increase. So the technologies, having technologies which don't pollute and which are effective in terms of resource use and energy use, that seems to be the key for solving the global energy and climate problem. Now, the basic trend with emissions is, is upwards. And the emissions may even double by, by the middle of uh, this century. Now, through a range of clean technologies, which actually are already readily available, we could drop the emissions. We could drop that. And, and through different technology families, we could really get the emissions down. Now, which technologies play a key role here? Most of the scenarios that we see on the energy future, they speak and give a strong signal for new technologies. New technologies meaning energy efficiency. We need to use energy more efficiently. We need to get more with less. And basically, it's really about 
better end-use technologies, better lamps, better lighting systems, better appliances, and at the same time we'd actually save money. Internationally, we estimate that about half of the climate change problem can be solved through energy efficiency, which, which actually saves money, saves resources. So the megawatts would be quite important compared to the megawatts. Now, on the production side, the, the single most important technology family will be renewable energy, solar, wind, bioenergy, maybe in the future marine energy. That together would be about 30% of problems. So energy efficiency and renewables together, that could be about three quarters of the solutions that we need to reduce the emissions down to sustainable level. Now let's have a quick look on what kind of technologies are we speaking about. Well, wind energy is one of the fastest growing energy sources today. Three to four percent of all electricity is already based on wind energy. And by the middle of this century, many estimates show that wind energy could produce about one quarter of all electricity globally. So this is a new sustainable technology which may be very important. And, and its price is coming down and it's competing almost without any subsidies and support with traditional energy. Or look on small case technologies like photovoltaics, solar energy, or electric mobility. These are scales of uh, technology which, which would be suitable for households, for buildings, houses. This is kind of distributed power. The houses produce electricity, and maybe they sell the electricity as well. So this is one very important technology. And putting solar energy in a big, big scale, even cities in the future could produce most of their power electricity by electricity uh, by solar electricity and combining that with electric mobility electric vehicles you could even charge your cars with electricity and in that sense solar energy could solve both the power problem electric vehicles the traffic problems remember coal and oil that's the big problems power and traffic and here you may have a combination which actually tackles that issue very very uh, bravely now, if we have a lot of these new technologies, solar, wind, etc., putting together these uh, in an energy system brings us to smart energy infrastructures. So you may have a, a range of different technologies with different characteristics. Sometimes the wind is blowing, sometimes not. Sometimes we, uh, solar is not shining, sometimes shining. Now, putting all technologies together, like a family, integrating together, actually means uh, creating a reliable, smart infrastructure which is able to produce clean energy 24-7 the our route. Smart infrastructures, smart grids, that's the way how we integrate these technologies together. We need a lot of knowledge here. We need ICT to combine with energy which then is able to master the whole energy system. The trend is, is quite uh, optimistic now for these new technologies. And, and also, I would say, the market conditions seems quite good. Uh, the market for wind energy, the market for solar energy, are actually growing very fast. Globally, half of all investments in power goes already to solar and wind. So there's a takeoff. And there's also a, a, an extra bonus with solar and wind. Well, we get clean energy, that's good. But also, because these are new technologies, based on new innovations. They need a lot of actual intelligence and human power to be built. So that creates a lot of jobs. So we see a, a hundred thousand new jobs created, green jobs, which create the technology, which again solve the problems. So the problem that we have, as in sustainability, climate change, environment, that urges for new technology would create new jobs. And I think this is very important for young people to understand that yes, clean energy creates new jobs. The old energies, because they are already mature, they destroy the jobs. So here we have a win-win a, a situation, definitely, through technology. Looking forward uh, in time now, uh, till the end of this century, and maybe looking also back uh, a few centuries, we, we, we will observe that there are transitions from different energy sources and technologies toward actually cleaner technology. 
So the energy evolution in some way goes to cleaner technology. We started in the 17th century with bioenergy, which was very clean. Then we had this fossil fuel area, which started in the 19th century, and we are still there. But by the end of this century, if now we use 80% of our energy through fossil fuels and 20 is, is clean energy, this figure may be reversed. That by the end of this century, 80% of the energy is clean, like renewable energy, and 20% is the old energy. And this kind of a very major paradigm shift may be possible now through these new technologies, which are getting cheaper and which are getting more spread on the market. Importantly, it is always uh, very important to emphasize that energy is also part of the technological evolution. And I believe that the evolution would not stop in energy. And I'll take it just as an example, the, the uh, lighting. We started with a very simple, simple incandescent lamp, which was very inefficient. Now we are in the LED lamps, which are very efficient. You don't need much resources, you don't need much electricity, but you get much light. And this development will go forward further. We don't yet know what's there in the future, but definitely innovations will never end. And this gives also hope for the future. And I think if, if you look on forward 2050, which is a very important milestone for climate change mitigation and solving the energy problems, I'm sure that the modern energy will look much difficult, different from today's, let's say, imperfect technologies. The new sciences like nano energy, uh, uh, biotechnology, materials technology, ICT, artificial in intelligence. When you put that into energy, that will create a super technology, very sustainable technologies, which, which actually enable uh, producing much energy cheaply and for the whole planet. And that, that's a very good combination in the sense that it also actually offers an opportunity for equality and for justice on, on this planet. Now finally, I could say when I speak about sustainable growth and energy, we, we have the technology solutions already there. And the economy of these new technologies doesn't seem bad. The economy is quite good. The new technologies are getting cheaper, cheaper than the old technologies. But what remains at the very end is a very important question that, that comes to us as, as, as human beings, as consumers, is about our choices. The technologies are there, but the question is, are we choosing those? This is also a question to the policy makers, the decision makers, that yes, the, they have to do decisions that help the consumers also change their energy habits. Thank you for your attention.